Happy Easter and welcome back to Azing News. At least more than 10 people deaths and hundreds of houses damaged by flooding which were caused by heavy rain. Heavy rain that occurred on Saturday, 1st of April 2021 at night caused an overflow river, landslides and massive floods in Dili, capital of Timor-Leste. The floods bring water and mud along the road and damaging houses, vehicles, infrastructures such as electric lines and public facilities throughout the city. Mainly happens in all administration posts, Cristore, Nainveto, Dongaleshu and Veracruz include outside of Dili, namely in Hera and Beduku. Most of the country's municipalities such as Baukau, Aileu, Same, Bobonaro, Special Administrative Region of Hoikusi, Manatutu and Ainaro experiencing the similar natural disaster. At least more than 10 people were killed and few others injured, several are missing and caused hundreds of people fled to safety, such as Don Bosco Gymnastic Hall and Government Building. The disaster also affected people's movement and caused health problems. In addition, urgent needs are food and access to clean water, health services and clean equipment. The calamity occurs in the time when the country in the lockdown period due to the coronavirus pandemic, thus increasing the concerns of patients of COVID-19 in isolation and in quarantine room and raising the concerns of capital's resident. This flood is the second worst compared to 2020. Timor-Leste receives its first vaccine AstraZeneca to combat coronavirus in the country. Timor-Leste receives the first batch of AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine on the 5th of April 2021. The vaccine is donated by the World Health Organization to assist the Timor-Leste in fighting the coronavirus after the number of patients increased in the country. My Indo Airlines aircraft carrying vaccination shots touched down at the Nikola Lobato International Airport in Dili, Timor-Leste at 1 p.m. On her speech, the Ministry of Health says the AstraZeneca vaccine is safe and has a good quality for people to be vaccinated. This AstraZeneca is safe. It has good quality and good efficacy. And we choose the best vaccines for our country. Bella adds, two months ago, Timor-Leste faced a tough situation. Therefore, the government urges all people to get vaccine in order to prevent the coronavirus. According to the schedule, Timor-Leste will roll out the vaccination program of AstraZeneca shots to the frontliners such as medical workers, country defense force, the FFDTL, national police of East Timor and the journalist. The arrival of the Oxford vaccines will greatly facilitate smooth operation of the vaccine campaign and enhance the country's ability to fight the pandemic. So far, Timor-Leste records more than 400 coronavirus cases and 271 recovered and no death. Indonesia restores sound decoder for Sriwijaya Air Jet, which crashed. Indonesia's Transport Ministry says they have recovered the cockpit voice recorder of a Sriwijaya Air Jet that crashed into the Java Sea shortly after takeoff on January 9, killing all 62 people on board. Divers found the casing and beacon from the 26-year-old Boeing CO-737-500 within days of the crash, but had spent nearly three months searching for the memory unit in relatively shallow but muddy waters that sometimes attract strong currents. Authorities unveiled the cockpit voice recorded to the media at news conference in Jakarta. A preliminary report by investigators into the Sriwijaya crash says the plane had an imbalance in engine thrust that eventually led the plane into a sharp roll and then the final dive into the sea. That report included information from the plane's other black box, the flight data recorder, which was recovered soon after the crash. The cockpit voice recorder could help investigators understand the actions taken by the pilots. Family of Sriwijaya crash victim hopes cockpit voice recorder uncovers accidents caused. 
Family of a Sriwijaya air crash victim hopes the discovery of a second black box can help shed light on what had happened to the ill-fated flight that crashed shortly after takeoff in January. Harapan yang pertama itu adalah uh, ini semua clear, semua clear, uh, kita semua tahu. We hope everything will be clear. We will know what happened to the flight. What happened when it was in the air before SJ-182 fell. Yang benar-benar terjadi di kokpit itu saat uh, SJ-182 ini mengudara. Indonesia recovers the cockpit voice recorder and the air accident investigator's head says it can took up to a week to be able to listen to the recording. The CVR can help investigators understand the actions had taken by the pilots of the doomed jet which crashed after taking off from capital Jakarta, killing all 62 people on board. Ardi adds the family is still mourning the loss of the 20-year-old who was described as a cheerful person in the family. Myanmar protesters burned copies of military constitution linked to military coup. Myanmar activists burns copies of a military framed constitutions two months after the junta seized power as the United Nations Special Envoy warned of the risk of a bloodbath because of an intensified crackdown on anti coup protesters. They, the military, propose those kinds of laws to do whatever they want. And that's why we have made this protest. We are organizing a burning of constitution booklets in protest because we can't accept this kind of unlawfully based constitutions. The same protester says he hopes to join an army loyal to Myanmar's government in exile led by former members of Aung San Suu Kyi's ousted National League for Democracy government. Social media posts show copies of the constitution real and symbolic being burned at the rallies and in homes during what one activist called a constitution bonfire ceremony. They also announces the scrapping of 2008 constitution drawn up by the military that enshrines its control over politics. The military has long rejected the idea of a federal system seeing itself as the central power vital to holding the fractious country together. <laughs> Thailand cares for injured care and refugees after they fled their homeland because of violence. Thailand authorities at the border town treat injured care and refugees because they fleeing violence in their homeland and clashes flared up between Myanmar's army and ethnic armed groups. Footage released by Thailand's Defense Ministry show border soldiers carrying ethnic Karen refugees on stretchers after receiving them at the border river then transporting them to a nearby hospital for treatment. A Reuters witness says about a dozen people fleeing military airstrikes in Myanmar were allowed to cross into a Thailand border village to receive medical treatment. A local talent official in the border region who spoke on condition of anonymity tell Reuters that the talent army was still sending back most of those fleeing Myanmar because it has deemed the situation over the border to be safe. Heavy clashes erupted on the weekend near the Thailand border between the army and fighters from Myanmar's oldest ethnic minority force. Indonesia raids find perpetrator involved in church attack in Makassar. Indonesia police find explosive in a raid in the city of Pekasi related to Sunday suicide attack on the cathedral on Sulawesi Island. Raids are conducted in several places in response to the attack took place outside the church in Makassar as the mass was finishing on the first day of Easter Holy Week. The two bombers died on the spot while 19 were wounded.
Indonesia's National Police Chief tells a news conference that they had arrested 13 people in Greater Jakarta, West Nusa Tenggara and Makassar, adding that they assumed different roles from making the explosives to detonating them. Authorities say they found 5.5 kilograms of explosives and several ingredients from the raids. Police say the bombers were a husband and wife who belonged to Jama'a Ansharut Daula, an Islamic State-inspired militant group suspected of suicide attacks on churches and a police post that killed at least 30 people in the city of Surabaya in 2018. Philippine military discovers illegal man-made structures on Union banks in the Spratly Island in the South China Sea. The military chief, Lieutenant General Cirilito Sobehana, says the structures were built on a Union bank locally called Pakakaisa Banks and described as a group of features with the Kalayan Island Group in the municipality of Kalayan in southwestern Philippine province of Palawan. The structures are discovered during one of the Philippine military's regular maritime patrols in the South China Sea, where it closely monitors the activities of the Chinese vessels believed to be manned by militias. The presence of Chinese boats inside its 200-mile exclusive economic zone at Witsun Reef has prompted a formal diplomatic protest from the Philippines and expressions of concern from Canada, Australia, the United States, Japan and others about China's intentions. The Chinese embassy in Manila has denied the boats spotted in Witsum Reef were meant by maritime militia, saying they were fishing vessels just taking shelter due to rough sea conditions. Meanwhile, Reuters have made calls to the Chinese embassy in Manila to seek comment on the discovery of man-made structures at Union Bank's went unanswered. Local media reports that Yangon Shopping Center fires amid protests. Video obtained by Reuters showing a Yangon shopping mall engulfed in a fire amid ongoing unrest in the country. Ruby Mart was seeing a blaze at around 2 a.m. local time with some onlookers capturing images of the fire on their phones. Local media says the two military-owned malls are on fire during a curfew with two people arrested near the Ruby Mart. Myanmar has been rocked by almost daily protest since the army overthrew Aung San Suu Kyi's elected government on February 1st, citing unsubstantiated claims of fraud in November elections. Suu Kyi and other members of her National League for Democracy are being held in detention. Anti-coup protesters continue to march in Yangon after that case rises in Myanmar. Protesters continue to demonstrate on the streets of Myanmar's largest city of Yangon, despite a rising debt in the country as the government continues its crackdown. A group of protesters are seated on the street singing a revolutionary song and holding placards with photos of the ousted Aung San Suu Kyi. According to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, at least more than 500 civilians have been killed in protests. In addition, fighting has also flared between the army and ethnic minority insurgents in frontier regions. Refugees fleeing the turmoil are seeking safety in neighboring countries. Thousands of protesters were out again in the different parts of the country. And that's all for today. Please do not forget to wash your hands, use your mask and keep the social distancing rule. See you.